Hello, friends. You know, we had Rick Smith recently on the show. Rick and I talked about an article that he wrote called Respect or Love in the column Training Dogs with Rick Smith. This is authored by both uh, Rick and his partner, Sharon Potter, and it's in the Pointing Dog Journal of March, April, 2006. I am reading this to you with the permission of each of those parties. Respect or Love. We want the best performance we can get from our dog, and to that end, we train and care for them with the intention of making the dog the best it can possibly be. The tricky part is finding the balance between our needs and the dog's needs. It's important to remember when dealing with dogs that they have a different view of the world than we do, which brings us to the point of this column. What should you give your dogs? Respect or love? If we are truly doing this for the dog, we should look at it from the dog's point of view. Dogs deal in packs and pecking order. They form strong bonds and attachments within the social group and show affection and a desire to protect those they are closest to. That sounds a lot like people, doesn't it? And it's really not that far from human behavior. The best way to understand how dogs interact is to think of them like we think of a different culture. What is right and proper and expected in one part of the world may be an insult in another. It could be highly offensive. Words, gestures, body language. All of these things have very different meanings depending on where we are. For example, shaking hands when introduced is a common courtesy for many of us. But in some areas of the Middle East, it is a major insult to offer your left hand to shake, as that is the hand used to clean up after using the toilet. So by offering one's left hand to shake, you send a message that you think they are, <clears throat> well, the stuff that ends up on the toilet paper of the left hand when it did its business. It may sound strange, but it's just the difference in cultures. When in Rome, and all that, after all. Let's translate this to dogs. What do our dogs want from us? They want what we would call respect. To them, this is the same as love, and it's a lot harder to respect a dog than it is to love it. Love is something we do for ourselves. It's about us, not the dog. We feel that if we show human affection to our dog, it will love us in return. While the dog may appreciate and benefit from the things that come with that human love, treats, petting, letting them sleep on the bed, and so forth, it does nothing to strengthen the dog's bond with us. In fact, if not done properly, it can actually weaken the bond. How so? In dog language, when they walk up next to you and shove their head under your arm and push until you give in and they've gotten petted, they've trained you to provide a service for them. They aren't doing it out of love and it takes some of the respect away as well because when a dog is able to make demands of you, it has moved ahead of you in the pack order. Begging for food is another way dogs move ahead in the pack order. And if you give them something every time they beg, you lose some of their respect. Pack leaders don't share their food, and food does not equal love. Trying to make a dog love you by feeding it is trying to buy love, and that's not possible. We see this a lot with people whose dogs are overfed, overindulged, and spoiled. And the humans can't figure out why their dog won't always listen or work for them. The dog has been trained to view the human as a walking vending machine, not a pack member. Loving a dog to the point of overfeeding, not setting boundaries, and neglecting consistent discipline can mean loving them to death. A dog that will not listen is out of control and may well get killed on the road. Likewise, a dog that is fat, out of condition, is not fit to hunt, and that can easily get them killed as well. And failing to have a dog in good condition before hunting shows neither respect nor love for that dog. Respect, on the other hand, is something we do for our dogs. Respect their ways and act according to their language and they will respect you. That respect will gain you more of a relationship than you imagined. Respecting a dog means giving a dog what it really needs rather than what makes us feel good. This means providing behavioral boundaries and discipline. We want to get a hundred percent of each dog's potential and just loving a dog will not achieve that goal. If respecting our dog means giving it what it really needs, then what does it need? First, a dog needs plenty of exercise and care. This means exercise for the dog's needs, and that may mean getting to run and play four to five miles, not a state walk around the block on a leash. The short walk satisfies our desire to say we exercise the dog, but it doesn't address the actual needs of the dog. How about care? The first consideration is food. Most of us strictly feed high quality dog food rather than table scraps and generic kibble from wherever happens to be on sale. Feeding a premium food and watching the dog's condition and weight shows that we respect the dog enough to keep it in good shape. Respecting a dog means we are consistent with our expectations both in the house and in the field. 
This means enforcing commands the dog knows, regardless of where we are. It also means that if begging at the table is not allowed, don't give in when guests come to dinner. Rules are rules, and in order to be respected and adhered to, they need to be consistently applied. Along these lines, dogs like attention. They like being petted and getting belly rubs and being played with. If you respect your dog, you'll train it to be a good citizen, so it can get plenty of attention without being out of control. This is especially true of puppies. Everybody wants to spoil a pup. Start with boundaries, even when they're pups, and you won't need to correct as much when they grow up, since the lines have already been drawn. This doesn't mean you can't play with them and have fun, but they need to know when they've gone too far, like nipping at your hands or ankles. Correcting a dog when it is needed also shows respect and encourages the dog to respect you as well. Something we hear often is, I don't want to correct my dog because he won't love me. What these folks don't realize is that setting boundaries and making gentle and appropriate corrections will bring them more of what they're terming love from the dog than they imagined. Dogs like routine and discipline. They can take advantage of people who provide neither, and the dogs end up out of control and being, in human terms, brats. Nobody wants to be around a brat, human or canine. One more aspect of respect comes into play when we think of older dogs. Often people don't want to take the older arthritic dog hunting because they feel sorry for the dog and the fact the old campaigner is not as comfortable, so they leave the dog at home. Respecting the dog means letting the dog go along and hunt, even if it's only a short while, and it means going slower and taking it easy. It hurts the dog far more to be left behind. Your veterinarian can give you some ideas of ways to help keep the older dog as comfortable as possible when hunting. This is one time when we feel indulging a dog is a good thing. To give that pensioner the chance to keep doing what it enjoys in whatever capacity it can perform speaks volumes about the respect and love you have for that dog. Some folks worry about an older dog dying while hunting, but I can't think of a better way to go than doing something like that. Respecting our dogs means loving them enough to help them be the best they can be while giving them what they need as dogs, rather than selfishly thinking of them as people. Bird dogs love to hunt. They're born and bred to hunt. A dog that respects you will hunt for you and work with you rather than just for itself. And that's something you can respect in return. And you'll both love it. Well, wasn't that a good article? I, I thought it was really thoughtful. I think it gives a, a whole frame to the relationship between the dog and the owner, trainer, hunter, what have you. I like that part about the old dog. A good friend of mine, Bill Swanson, had an old, old golden retriever that you will see on one of the shows that we're going to have on the podcast. In its last two years, Bill would go out and they would know where a bird was planted. And he would come out because Nikki could only walk then with Rimadil. But still, Nikki would get one and maybe two birds and was just as happy as could be. Bill would walk it back to the vehicle, put it up. That's respect for the dog. Love for the dog too, but respect. Some of these things I think apply to having children. But that's such a big subject, I'm not going to go into that at all. Anyway, I hope you like this article. Follow up with Rick Smith at HuntSmith.com, Pointing Dog Journal at PointingDogJournal.com. Both of them are on my website. Until again, I hope you like the reading. Bye-bye.